Hey guys, today we're gonna to take a look at a relatively new feature in Looker Studio, it's funnel charts. So you may be familiar with these in your Google Analytics. Uh, basically it shows the path of users on your site to something that you wanna see them doing, right? So like on a retail site, it might be viewing a product and then the steps to conversion. So it's important to see where people are dropping off in that funnel, which gives you an idea of where you can optimize it. So are there places that you can change the content, the experience, the whatever that is to try to get them to the ultimate conversion goal, which in retail is, is a purchase, but it can also be, you know, a lead form or something like that on your website. So today we're going to take a look in Looker Studio. We're going to use Google's merchant data. This is uh, data from Google's site. So in this instance, it would be a retail site, but really the steps are going to uh, be similar if you have a non-retail site and you just have a funnel that leads from a landing page, for instance, to um, you know a lead form or, or a download or something like that. So let's take a look. So in this, um, we're going to go to add a chart and then all the way to the bottom, we have funnels. And there's three different types of funnels in this. Uh, we'll take a look at them uh, both or all of them here, but um, they just have a different little bit of a layout for you. So the default one starts out with event names and views. That's fine as far as the event name. This is gonna be all of the events on your site. So let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see a little bit better. All right, so that's not very helpful. <laughs> so we're gonna do, uh, instead of views, we're gonna do event count. Okay, that's gonna tell us how many times an event happened. So whether it's a, a new view, whether it's a product view purchase or whatever. So this is all the events on the site and the count. So again, not particularly helpful yet because this is all the events. And so in GA4, pretty much everything per people do in your site that gets recorded is an event, whether it's a page view, whether it's a scroll, whether it's a click, all of those things that you set up. So in retail, you kind of have to define these events based on the data layer and, and that type of thing. So you're passing this event information to uh, usually Google Tag Manager, which gets recorded in GA4. It's things like add to cart or uh, you know purchase or remove from cart, those types of events. So those all have to be defined in GA4. Um, so let's take a look at how we can do this. So one of the things that you need to do is know first what events are actually defined on your site. So in this case, we know that um, we're gonna to wanna to filter this for only specific events. Obviously, we don't want um, session start necessarily. Although you could, I guess it would get kind of busy. Um, you know, page view isn't necessarily helpful because that's everybody. Um, so let's create a filter and we're going to start selecting those events that we want to look at. So we're going to create a filter. We're going to call it funnel events. And then we're going to include event name. And it equals. And so now we're going to look at what events Google's actually recording. And so we got to this by going to the admin and looking at their events, okay? And now we can see which ones they're tracking. Now, the reason this is important is because in some systems, not all of the purchase events, or maybe even on your site, if your developers didn't set it up, not all of them are necessarily gonna be recorded that we're looking at here. So if for whatever reason your developers didn't add, um, you know, add to cart, for instance, um, shame on them for not doing that, but if they didn't, it's not gonna be available for you. Um, in Shopify sites, if you're using the default uh, Google and YouTube app, which will um, put some events out of the box on your checkout process, um, because for Sh Shopify basic sites, the non Shopify plus, you don't really have access a lot of times to the uh, shop shopping cart events unless you're using the pixel. And that's a whole nother topic that we'll get into. But for most people, what they'll do is they'll just add that Google shopping and the Google and YouTube um, app, and that will deploy 
your Google Analytics tags in the shopping cart, but not all of them. So it doesn't put all of them in there. It puts some of the main ones in there. So it is important for you to check this list to see what you do and what you don't have. All right, so what we're gonna do is just bounce back and forth with what we think are the important events here. I'm gonna make it easier and copy and paste them. So add to cart, we definitely want. Begin checkout. And what's next? <clears throat> Probably view an item. So view item. So we want to know, you know, what that path was from actually looking at an item to adding something to the cart. How many people made that jump to purchase? So view item is a good one. Uh, view cart, that might be. And you can always go in and modify this filter if you find that uh, it's returning too many things or if it's not the ones you really find important for helping to optimize your site. Um, so view cart, let's do the uh, Add payment info, they got to that step. And obviously purchase. And then if they add their shipping info. And yeah, I'm adding these out of kind of out of order in this filter, but it's going to return by the number of events that are happening. So we'll see how that works out. So I think these are a lot of the common ones that you're going to want to track. Add to cart, begin checkout, view item, view cart, add payment info, purchase. Uh, you may want to look at remove from cart um, if that is being tracked. You may want to look at um, uh, if there's uh, promotions or something like that, but in this case, um, they're not, it doesn't look like they're tracking that, um, like coupons or anything like that. Um, so let's do another one here. Let's just do that one event name just to see how that comes out. Remove from cart. All right. And so now you can see what we have here, which we can go in and stylize these. We can change the uh, font size to something a little bit larger. There we go. All right, not the prettiest chart necessarily, but so now what you can see is this flow, right? So they viewed an item, they added it to cart, they viewed the cart, began checkout, and you can see the diminishing numbers going from there. So. Um, from the view item, which is the starting point in our scenario here, uh, to purchase, uh, it shows you the percentages that made it through there. Um, obviously, you could go back further than this. You could actually go back instead of just view item, you could go to some sort of um, maybe just the page views in general, how many people are actually viewing an item, that kind of thing. Um, so this will help you build that. Now, I mentioned that there was other chart types, so let's look at those. This is the inverted triangle, I believe. And this is a stepped bar chart. This will give you more of a visual indication of the percentages by the size of the, the bars. And so you can see, obviously, the view item is 100%. Uh, and then the others decline from there. They get smaller. So this will give you more of a visualization of rather than just looking at the percentages, actually looking at the size. And then this does a similar thing, just using a more smoothed look and this looks like your more traditional funnel um, funnel chart that you would be expecting. And so this way you can look at that process through the site. Now, like I said, you can do this as well for you know uh, other 
events on your site. It could be if you're documenting uh, certain page views or if you want to go in and look at other events. So if you look at, for instance, events that they've added here, so we could do something like add to wish list or, um, you know, first visit or page view. And then if somebody goes to some other event, like a form fill or something like that, that's on your site that you've created as an event, uh, it could be, you know, certain link clicks, uh, to, you know, form fills to a download or something. So all of those, again, you'd have to specify those events typically in GTM or in GA4, uh, get those tracking before you can report on them. And then you can build your funnel report. So kind of simple, you know, that's, that's, uh, it's, it's setting up the filter, I think is the hardest part. And you just need to make sure that you're naming those events correctly. Now, another quick tip that has been added, uh, I'm not sure when it was added, but it just appeared recently that I really noticed it was the add a quick filter. And, uh, this is where you can actually, um, start to do some just quick filtering on this. It's not a permanent filter. It's just a quick filter. So like if you close this and come back, um, it won't save that for you, but, um, you can do like a specific, you know, uh, source medium. So if we want to do, for instance, um, to referral. All right. So in this situation, they, we did referral and they viewed the items. Nobody was clicking out. So again, depends on your data. So, uh, but this is just a quick way that if you had this chart and you wanted to filter it by, um, a specific program or other type of dimension or metrics or campaign name or something like that, you could do that here. Uh, just get a quick view of that. Of course, if you want to make that a permanent thing, you can actually add a control and do a, um, data control, uh, that would look at, you know, the different marketing programs that you have. If you wanted to do it that way, we actually have a video about how to do that, uh, which I'll link in the description. So hope this was helpful. You know, executives, I know particularly love to see these kind of funnels and understanding where people are dropping off. It does give you an opportunity to look at how you can potentially optimize the site. Um, if you can narrow down that, you know, drop off in people, if you can, uh, make your landing pages more compelling or your product pages more compelling, or maybe you're doing an offer or a coupon or something like that, you can see how that changes over time. So as always, if you have questions or if you have something that you'd like to see, let us know in the comments. We try to respond back to everybody. Um, and we always are looking for ideas about what you'd like to see or things that you have questions about in Looker Studio, in GA4, or in marketing in general. And if you need help with your analytics or with your marketing programs, give us a caller. I'll put a link in the description below where you can reach out and set up a free half hour consultation with me and we can talk about your needs. So have a great one, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.